Christopher Morel will flirt with 40 home runs. Pete Crow Armstrong will win a gold glove. And Nico Horner will regress? What did you say? These are a few highlights of what I think position players will do on the 2024 Cubs. Setup Nation, now that Cody Bellinger has signed with the Cubs and Matt Chapman is off the board, it pretty much feels like this offense is set for 2024. I'm going to predict what this lineup should look like, plus the guys who get the most playing time, what their numbers are going to look like at the end of the season. I'm also going to assume that this lineup that I share with you is based on Pete Crow Armstrong getting called up in May. And I hope as I make my predictions, you let me know what you think down in the comments. Let's get to it. First, let's start with the lineup. If everyone is healthy, this to me is the most common one through nine lineup that Craig Council will put out this year. I've got Ian Happ leading off and playing left field, Nico Horner right behind him at second base, Cody Bellinger batting third and likely at first base when PCA is in the lineup. Seiya Suzuki hopefully bringing those second half numbers from last season into the cleanup spot and playing right field. Christopher Morel's power bat at fifth and playing third base. Dansby Swanson batting sixth and of course giving you gold glove defense at short. Michael Bush at DH at a low pressure spot at seventh in the lineup. Jan Gomes gets the majority of the starts at catcher and bats eighth. And PCA turning the lineup over with some speed in the nine hole. Now let's dive into the numbers of each one of these guys. Deal one. Pat will get a chance at Miller. Here's the throw to the plate. Tag! Ball game! Oh, baby! <laughs> wow! If you only include the years that Ian Happ played a full season, this was by far his best production year of his career. He had a career high in RBIs, walks, stolen bases, and runs. And he's been trending up for a few years now, so I see that continuing. So in 2024, I've got Ian Happ hitting 261 with 23 home runs and an 805 OPS. One regression will be the gold glove. Not gonna happen in 24. I don't believe he earns that third straight one. Next, Nico Horner, after seeing his swing at spring training and hearing his desire to hit more home runs, I believe he will make that a reality, but I think it will come at a cost. In 24, we will see Nico swing and miss more often and have a lower average, but he's a pro and I don't think it's going to be a drastic change. I think Nico will hit 16 home runs with a 271 average, lock down a career high with a 750 OPS, and steal 35 bases. I also think he will win his second straight gold glove at second base. RBI single and a strikeout. He drives this one in the air. High and deep out towards right center. That one back and it's gone. Bellinger is third home run in this series. And the Cubs have tied it. It is 4-4. Number 23 for Belly. Bellinger. Oh, Cody Bellinger. Such a wild card if you look at the season-to-season -season stats. But I think Bellinger is still out to prove that he's truly back. In 2024, Belly will show the Cubs that he's worth the $30 million by putting up a 285 batting average, hitting 32 home runs, and leading the team with 105 RBIs. I think he will also swipe 20 bags and be an all-star for the first time since 2019. Welcome back, Belly. And part of the reason that he will do well is because of the protection behind him. Drilled left field on its way. Forget it. Out of here. We are tied. Say a letter. The kick and pitch. In the air. Right field. That one back. Gone. Walk it off. And Morrell is the hero here tonight as he sprints around the bases. Look for big years from Seiya Suzuki and Christopher Morrell. These are my two bold predictions in this lineup that could feel like a stretch. Seiya batting fourth will hit an MLB career high 32 home runs and lead the team in average at 295 and also notch over 100 RBIs. All of this while tying Bellinger for the team lead in OPS at 880. But the home run leader will be Christopher Morrell. I've got this emerging star hitting 38 home runs this year. 
a large leap from his 2023 total at 26, but keep in mind that Christopher did this with only 107 games played and only 388 official at bats. Guys, that's a home run every 15 ABs. Make that a full 500 plus at bat season and you definitely have your team leader in bombs. He's got 17 home runs. The pitch bounced past the mound, off the glove of Quas. Bear handing it to Swanson and he throws him out at first. Another incredible play by Dansby Swanson. Batting six, Dansby Swanson. It really was a tale of two seasons for Dansby. After hitting two home runs on August 1st, Dansby had put together a pretty impressive slash line through his first 93 games, 266 average, 350 on base, and a 796 OPS. But his final 54 games to end the season were anything but impressive offensively. In those 54 games, he hit 206 with an on base percentage of 288 and an OPS of just 651. Overall, it ended up being a serviceable first year for Dansby at the plate while also playing a stellar shortstop and winning his second straight gold glove. And I think that's what we will come to expect from Swanson consistently. For that reason, I'm expecting him to hit 262 with 23 home runs and a 770 OPS and win another gold glove. I think he will also be an all-star once again in 2024. Look at Michael Bush. Swings at the first pitch and lifts it in the air to center field. Loriano back at the wall. Gone! That's the first big league homer for Michael Bush. And it puts the Dodgers in front 3-2. to two. Michael Bush, the newest Cubs edition, is up next. Bush will play in his first full season in the majors after getting 81 plate appearances for the Dodgers in 2023. The top 50 MLB prospects struggled in his limited time, but with him getting a real shot as an everyday player, I think he will find a nice home in this lineup. In his first season with the Cubs, I predict Bush to knock out 21 home runs while batting 245 and putting up a 7 90 OPS. Infield is in. Base hit into left center field. One run is in. Hap heads to the plate. He scores. Two run single. Jan Gomes. Cubs lead 5 4. Jan Gomes, can we talk about how awesome his 2023 was? And I honestly do think he will regress, but I also think he will be in a lot of late inning close games again in 2024, and that's where he thrived last season. Last year, two outs, runners in scoring position, he hit 302. And in late and close games, according to baseball reference, he hit 292. Overall, in 23 games, Gomes hit 267 with 10 home runs and a 723 OPS. In 24, I see Gomes hitting 255 with 12 home runs and a 710 OPS. Not too much different from 2023. There's a drive to right center, and that's a gapper, and that's going to be trouble. No! A great catch by Pete Crow Armstrong. He came out of nowhere. Rounding it out with Pete Crow Armstrong, so many of you Cubs fans freaked out when PCA had a whole 14 at bats last season and did nothing. I'm going to assume the sky is not falling on the Cubs' number one prospect, and Crow Armstrong will be just fine. But I still expect his glove to be the reason Cubs fans fall in love with him. Picture him as the Dansby Swanson version of center field with a little less pop. I think PCA will hit 230 with 12 home runs and a 730 OPS. But I also see him stealing over 30 bags. And I'm going to be bold and give him a gold glove, y'all. Even though he won't get the call up until after April. Outside of these nine starters, there's a lot of question marks and this bench may change periodically due to trades, options, and injuries. The two guys I see being staples in the bench all season are Nick Madrigal and Miguel Amaya. Mike Talkman, because of the crowded outfield, may get traded or released depending on his performance. Miles Mastroboni and Patrick Wisdom also have some trade value, and if Matt Shaw comes up as quickly as Cubs experts think he may, then these guys might be the odd men out. So when we look at the two guys that are going to be staples, I see Nick Madrigal hitting 274 with two home runs and a 690 OPS, and Miguel Amaya hitting 250 with nine home runs and a 720 OPS. Let me know what you think in the comments, and make sure to check out my starting rotation predictions in this video that just popped up for you on your screen.